Hello, well, welcome back to the Cube here in New York City. I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube. We are here for our East Coast studio, starting to phase in more programming every day, every week, dropping in for Media Week. Got a great guest here, Michael Lebos, the tech executive. Has been been there, done that. He's been <laughs> run companies, built companies, built services. Knows the cloud. One of our experts in the ecosystem. Good friend of the Cube. Um, Kind of doing some really interesting things right now with private equity, looking at the big picture, and your experience spans all over the place from the big centers of the world all the way through running the big cloud operation type deals. Thanks for coming on. Good hey, to see you. Great to be here, John. Yeah, I love I love this setup, man. Not this bad. Is great. Not yeah, bad. right, right over the floor. Well, I just love that Silicon Valley meets Wall Street with wall to wall coverage, and you know Silicon Valley's been the epicenter of that innovation, that first wave of tech. And it's, it's hard to replicate Silicon Valley, but if right. any, anyone right. actually doing it, it's yeah. in New York now because New York has shifted just in the, the demographics, kind of that migration out of San Francisco during the, quote, political bad years. Of, now they got a new mayor in there. So we see a lot of top talent yeah, 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 yeah. to New York uh, from Silicon Valley. Not so much Miami, New York. And so you've seen the big companies here. You know, you, you're you here. Google, Amazon, they all have big, big buildings downtown. Right. But it's the tech ecosystem that's emerging because we're now, I think, one and a half generations of that web scale startup scene that grew out of here, the tumblers of the world. I mean, we've seen those. Those are now senior executives. I was talking to Jesse uh, Robbins. He um, He's founder of Chef. OK, the scene here has got a lot of meetups. It, it's like Palo Alto, but New York. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's massive. Customers are here. Uh, it's it's a it's a flying tech scene right now. It's pretty awesome. absolutely, and it, it tends yeah. to skew enterprise more so, yeah. in terms of the growth the opportunities, the skill set, the the industry. I wonder why the big budgets, fat budgets are insurance, every vertical seat, yeah, 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 yeah. financial services. services. I mean, that is like huge. big time money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it's huge. And all, all people coming out, starting companies are coming from those environments. Right. They know right. how the sausage is made in the enterprise. Yeah, yeah. Which is a good thing. It's It's been incredible to watch over the last 10 years in terms of how New York has grown, uh, particularly in the startup scene and the presence of a lot of West Coast yeah. VCs here in the city. So that the, the venture community is obviously um, yeah. thriving. But it's not just that. It's, it's the private equity community. Yeah. And Talk about the dynamics. Share your thoughts on New York. I well, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a born and bred New Yorker, uh, you know, I so <laughs> and, I, and I used to just, you know, I was bi coastal and I commuted to uh, Silicon Valley for years, you know, worked with a major, yeah. you know, uh, VC out there. Um, and and so, yeah, you, you're, you're not going to ever duplicate Palo Alto. You're not. Yeah, it's all hard right. To replicate. Yeah, but it's just gonna... hard to. It's like Google. You can't replicate that. It's a unique animal. Right. But New York's got characteristics. Uh, oh, absolutely. And it, and it's thriving. You know, the ad scene. I mean, that's that's what Google's presence is all about here, right? Um, and so when you think about uh, kind of you know the the skills, the talent, um, the intensity. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a, it's a different kind of intensity. Right. So you have this like tech AI intensity, you know, in Northern California. Yeah. You know, and people hear about business and, and finance. Yeah. Um, and, and it's and it's thriving. Yeah. And so that's that's excitement. And it's attracting a lot of talent. Yeah. I remember when I moved to Silicon Valley 25 years ago and I love to get your thoughts on how this relates to New York. Um, what I loved about it was that's where the action was. A concentrated area, Palo Alto and that vicinity, Sand Hill Road, the VCs and um, I was from Boston. I'm like, okay, this beacon. The risk profiles were different. They weren't really leaning into the web at that time. Um, they were putting their tone with it. Was, it was frothy in the West Coast. Right. Term sheets were flying. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, it was a great place to be. Uh, I was blown away by, wow, everyone here is like me. I love this. My tribe is here. Yeah. And then um, I made a comment on the queue, but I got a lot of feedback on it. Um, I said, it's turning into LA. Because at that time, LA was like, sprawling you had to drive everywhere and hollywood was there but this, it was pretty much distributed yeah but it's in la yeah. la was big I, so i called um recently called silicon valley the new la of tech in the sense that it's distributed you got san francisco you got palo alto housing prices you got to drive to oakland's getting some right, stuff right. it's like everything's happening but it's gotta go drive places yeah so you don't go downtown palo alto hang out for a couple of weeks and go to four or five meetups like it used to be it's now all over the place. Not that's the bad thing. That's just what it is. New York 
It's concentrated. It's concentrated. It's concentrated. Yeah. You take the subway. You're at you're at three meetups. Yeah. There's three meetups last night I could have gone to. Yeah. And there was two of them. Yeah. Um, they were great, and they were just technical presentations, kind of like the 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 West Coast days of, hey, we're sharing. All right. So this is definitely happening. Yeah. Your take on this? You mentioned enterprise. What's the what's your view on this? Looking down and seeing how this is generationally changing. What? Why is it happening? Is it because just uh, it's a hot place to be? more elders into the system to be more supportive to the risk, capital markets forming? What are some of the characteristics? Well, I mean, um, at one, first off, I love that you, you have that, that Valley perspective as a transplant and you're spending time here, right? Because I, so I, as an East Coaster, I, I used to have to go to the West Coast in order to get my fix. Yeah, and so you're, you're here, which is, that's awesome, yeah. right? So, so that's number one. Number two, um, what I really think is what's happening, you know, in terms of um, enterprise adoption. Yeah, you know, they need the talent. They need to, you know, draw on the people who understand kind of how to build platforms, how to scale a business, you know. And so that's not necessarily inherent in on, on the East Coast. Yeah, the, the money's here. There's certainly yeah. a ton of money. Uh, but it tends to look at more mature parts of the cycle. So as I was about to say, like private equity, you know, I mean, some of the, you know, the major funds are here and, you know, also to whatever degree, yeah. uh, obviously in Boston, but there's a significant presence here, yeah. a lot of money and the private equity money, you know, um, they want uh, big outcomes. So they want re they retooling. What's the or, or what? What's well, I mind? mean, they're they're looking at like later stage companies, you know, whereas, you know, in, in Northern California, it's early stage, you know, zero to 10 million. All right. They're looking at, at companies that have, you know, matured somewhat, you know. And so you know, in terms of, um, you know, what what part of the investment cycle, you know, it's 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 a bit later on yeah. um, or the companies have been around for a long time and they're rolling them up. Um, or they're extending into whatever set of adjacencies. So the, you know, the investment theses are all over the place. Um, and, and so that's, it's exciting here, but for a different Reason. set of reasons. So they, I mean, and by the way, there's a huge private public market going on with all these secondaries. Yeah. Secondary sales going on pre-public IPOs. Yeah. And we're in the IPO. Well, because we've seen a, you know, basically a desert, you know, in terms of companies IPOing and so they're, yeah. they're, they're, there's a longer tail. People stay in private, they still get liquidity. So it's interesting right. market. So it's, is that where they're playing? I mean, obviously private, explain the private equity action right now. Obviously with Trump election changes that uh, the M&A side pretty significantly. Yeah. Um, so that's gonna open up the Komodo. I think- Or M&A action, clearly. You just hit Lena it. Khan has been holding everything back. There, there, there's been a real kind of, you know, like hold on the market, you know, almost almost like a frozen winter. Um, and I really think the thaw is on, and you called it out. Um, with the election, we're gonna see a huge change, a huge ramp. I mean, because the, the activity, the demand is late. It's sitting there, yeah. right? It's just not tapped. <laughs> so what we're about to see is Tap like the- that demand. Yeah, the, 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 floodgate, the floodgate <laughs> is, is open. Because, you know, I talked to all these guys, and that's the problem, a lot of talk. Yeah. Not a lot of action. Yeah, there's no horses on the track. I mean, you can't bet on horses if there's no horses running. Yeah. So right now we got to get those horses on the track. What, so in your mind, what's the sequence of events that will prop up this M and A uh, boondoggle about to appear? Well, I thought you know, um, but you know, you're right to call it the election. I thought you know, as soon as interest rates started to move, that we would see you know a, a bit of a thaw, and I think you know we haven't re it, it ha we haven't tapped into it yet. I think I'm, we're seeing more noise. Yeah. than we were, but I think what, what we need to see is not just an interest rate move, but the environment, the yeah. an environmental shift. And that's what I think this election yeah. has triggered is that the environment, is it's a new ball game. Yeah, let's talk about the cloud players because um, I remember at the, um, the last kind of slowdown pre-Gen AI, Dave and I were talking on theCUBE about how, you know, okay, COVID hit, and we saw a potentially a recession right there. But we were speculating that we've never had a, an environment where you had such great hyperscalers in market. So the economic analysis of what does a recession look like when you have this innovation engine of AWS, Azure just was getting going at that time. Now they're pumping on all cylinders. You got Google Cloud, 
Oracle's got a cloud. They got a database cloud, and they're in multi-cloud. You got VMware going kind of with Broadcom. Okay, so you have these productivity engines. Yes. Apple. I mean, mention Apple. Okay, you got the big. Yeah. You know, the, the, the even Facebook. Facebook. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. I, Me, I, Meta. Excuse me. I kill calling them Facebook, but I can't. But I even said on the cube um, that Meta could be the next AWS because they have such the the GPU stockpile, and yeah. they got the open source software. So if I'm a developer, I'm I'm go if Meta Oops offers a hosted option, I'll go with them. Yeah. Maybe not AWS or not. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna, gonna I'm gonna push back a little bit okay. on that. But okay. let's go there in a second, but let's lay out the hyperscalers. What's their role in this market? Because you know, if I'm a private equity person, I'm looking at roll ups and then late stage investments going public, yeah. high growth and roll ups. Um, and then roll up take public. So you know I've been in and around cloud for a very long time. Yeah. Yeah. Um and the trick for cloud has always been follow the money. Who's spending what CapEx? And I think what the market is looking at, particularly in the last week, because if you think about um, the all announced earnings, um, what the market was looking at was return on invested capital, almost like Dell from like 20, 30 years ago. And so uh, the, the amount of money, the increase, you know, the billions per quarter, yeah. So when you think about NVIDIA and you think about, well, who's driving NVIDIA? Like there's like four customers. Yeah. They, that, uh, that, the whole thing boils down to like four or five customers who are, you know, sucking everything that they can get, yeah. you know, from uh, NVIDIA and investing in these data sets. And they're also not just investing in NVIDIA, you know, they're building their own chips, you know, so they're, they're contracting out for that. And so, you know, the one that I thought got the most attention in the past week was Amazon because their numbers were stellar. And, you know, they not only, you know, was their, you know, revenue uh, great, but, you know, their yeah. operating income was off the hook, all right? And so what people, I think, took from that was that they're getting the return on that investment because they're, they're in, the level of capital investment was, was off the hook, all right? Not only that, but Andy said he was gonna spend even more. Yeah. All right. And so, and, and I'm not trivializing what Google yeah. and Amazon, I mean, uh, Microsoft are doing. They're spending as well. Um, and I, but I think what, what, what people are looking at, well, okay, you know, so you're building out data centers, you know, you're setting, uh, you know, building the tools, the models, you know, all of the, you know, kind of, you know, you're going to war, yeah. right? And you need, you need to arm, yeah. you know, the you soldiers. And so, so what's happening there is, you know, the investment in those platforms and those capabilities, and it's not new, right? They've been doing this for better than 10 years. Yeah, they, they, they get it. Yeah. The operating leverage they're gonna get from that investment, it's gonna to wanna to keep their market right. share. And even even that their 18% number, growth number, on the, are their base is still growing. Yeah. And that's, and that's, this is sandbagged earnings too, because like there's more behind it because there's other, there's, I like free purchase. I like that. Like sandbag. You think they're sandbag? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I know they are. You can look at just the year on year quarterly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. they're not, it's not as lumpy because they have pre purchases, discount. Yeah. You know they how they yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to say sandbag. They're not really, Amazon's never been, you know, dancing to Wall Street. Right. They dance to their own tune. Yeah. And Jassy's no different than Bezos. And they're like, what's best for the business? Right. If someone says, hey, I'll drop in a pre purchase. Yeah. Here's my discount. Yeah. Well, how do you recognize that over the quarter? Yeah. So the so difference the, between 10 years ago and now, and maybe even longer, is that you know they have the customers, they have the sales force, they have the the software, the platforms, yeah. you know, and you know they're they're growing. What did Microsoft say? We're we're we're, we're at capacity. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're, we're not building data centers fast enough in order to address the demand. Yeah. And not to, this is more conspiracy theory. I'm not going to say, I'll say it, but I can't back it up other than hearing chirping from the, the community in the streets when I head to these meetups. I hear a lot of kind of, I hear what founders are talking about. So one strategy could be, I'm not saying this is Amazon strategy, but if everyone wants GPUs, I better buy them so that they have to buy my service because right. I hear entrepreneurs saying, I can't get my hand on GPUs. One, they can't right. afford them. And, they can't. and two, they're not available, all right? Because guess who's bogarting all the GPUs? Yeah, well, they are. They're, they're, they're sourcing agreements in terms of the volume. Yeah, the you know, they're getting right. Location that they're, they're getting, getting more. I mean, wh yeah, yeah. What was the big story about you know Tesla and Nvidia? 
right? Building, you know, what, 100,000 GPUs in like 19 days. Yeah. I mean, you know, so the rate and pace of the ramp and, and the build out, and that's happening across all the majors. So, you know, Facebook, yeah. Amazon, well, you know, Google, you know, Tesla. You know, you know Amazon well, you know the cloud guys. So I asked Matt Garvin this question uh, last time I had my exclusive interview with him a couple months ago. I'll also see him next next in, in next week, actually. I'm going to go to Seattle and meet him with pre reinvent my spec, my annual uh, curtain raiser. That's a, that, I love when you do that. I, that's that's a bath hockey game, yeah. I hope. But I asked him a couple months ago, you can appreciate this. Because I was like, Amazon won the game early days with, with b helping people provision hardware so they yeah. have to prick by their own. Yeah. Put the credit card down. That's that, right. that started the they, they invented they, the market. They invented the market. So yeah. Dropbox, all these Airbnbs. Yeah. Hey, oh, why would they go build it? They don't know what they're doing yet. So right, right. go on Amazon. Okay. They made it really easy to get storage. To get scale. Yeah. All right, just get, stand up some basics. Right. They have to test stuff. Great. Yeah. Okay, great. Then the, that's it. What's the AI version of that? Because... The developer today was in middle school using Google Docs. Yeah. Now is out coding. They like Google Docs. They like Google Vertex. Right. What are you guys? You're my grandfather's, my father's cloud. Who? Oh. That's what I said. The Amazon? No, I said the young kids might look at Amazon as. Oh, like, come on. Bedrock, Code Whisperer. I, 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 I'm, I mean, I'm just setting the table for the question. SageMaker. I mean, they've I'm got. Just, they've got. Again, I had, to, I had to set the table saying, I'm not saying kids are saying that you're my dad's cloud, but like. They're young enough to be. <laughs> they are. They are. They are. So they're the old man in the cloud. <laughs> and I, I, I don't use that's, that's my dad's cloud. And no, he had a great answer. So Amazon is not my dad's cloud. So Garmin had a great answer. He said, no, no, we are. We, that is our customer. Yeah. So if you're a startup today, you need AWS all right. to do GPUs. Yeah. They got Tranium. They got Inferentia. They got yeah. all the best chips. They got the best infrastructure. He said our bread and butter will continue to be developers and startups and those founders. All right. He was poo-pooing this idea that they're not going to be irrelevant. They, He said they're not going to be irrelevant. will be relevant yeah. to startup founders. All right. Period. All right. Took it off the table. That Well, that was, that's yeah. their bread and butter. And that's their risk. That's always been their bread and, and butter. They're, and they're great at it. So they're, yeah. I, you know, they're very much aware of what the risks were already. I kind of laid it out over the top. But yeah, yeah. You know, the point is, is that that's not wrong. Kids who are coding right now are... We're using Google Docs in middle school yeah, to know yeah. about collaboration. So user interfaces, everything has to change. But on, on. you're really close to the problem. But that's not the problem. What's the problem? Problem is, for those guys, that segment of the market, they're developing stuff. All right? And it's the same problem we've had in cloud for, like, ever. And I actually set up a cloud economics practice here in New York, all right, years ago with Accenture. Um, and because we understood... It's all about the money, mm -hmm. all right? And the problem that they're experiencing is, oh, let's develop an AI agent, you know, in order to outbound to customers and interact with customers. They have no clue how much that's going to cost, totally. all right? And they wake up, and the bill is, you know, just off the hook. So it used to be yeah, yeah. I left a server on. Right, I, I spun up a whole bunch of resources. Yeah, I left it on. I forgot about it. I came back, and you know the the Shit, bill shock. Right, yeah. bill shock. Don't leave your lights on. Now <laughs> it's I I spun up you know an AI application and I trained everything. Yeah, and I and I, I let it go. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah. like a drunken sailor, it's spent. You're done. Yeah. Right. There's no refund on that bill. I was, I was like, pay the no, again. This is the point. Look, I want this. This is a great conversation. I want to ask you a question because. Um, you had such great experience with Accenture. Accenture was the iconic professional services organization. Still is. Still is. How they grew was they scaled up with more people. Yeah. Right? You add more people, yeah. right? And maybe, maybe get some operational leverage. They're up uh, to like 750,000 people. So I, I, I want to get, and that, by the way, that's all well known. They did a great job. Now you see professional services come into tech companies' platforms. Yeah. And you see professional services firms bolting on operating leverage with cloud platforms. Yes. Yeah. Because you're starting to see a productivity gain yeah. on that business person. So you're starting to see a 10x business user. Remember right. the old 10x engineer? Yeah. yeah. Uh, go to the cloud, you get better labor. Yeah. It, at the end, it's a 10x engineer. Yeah. You're starting to see this service model where right. the person using the AI, the human in the loop, right. it could be a professional service consultant, it could be a sales rep, it could be somebody else. They're 
if they're not getting a step up multiple of operating leverage from AI, we say that that's, that's a sub-optimized outcome. Right. So what's your thoughts on this? Because you live that game of oh scaling up services. When you look at the advantage you can get from a 10X business person yeah, yeah. with AI, just take that logic, 10X engineer, now is a 10X or maybe more business user. All right. So what's your thoughts on that? Well, there's, there's, a, there's a great term for it. Um, so it's, it's a force multiplier. And so, so you're right to call out Accenture. It grew, yeah. right? It, it, it multiplied people, all right? Uh, in the, you know, 2012, 2013, it had like 235,000 employees. All right, today it's closer to 750,000. Uh, you know, obviously doing business in yeah, you know, great business. Multiple, we worldwide, this. multiple countries. Um, and so, you know, what we've seen, and, and this is the pattern, we've seen this over and over again in terms of in order to achieve scale, right? Um, and so you wanted to lower your, your unit cost, you know, in terms of work. Um, and so that's, that's the whole offshoring. Right now, we're seeing the blend between you know on-site, onshore, nearshore, offshore, and so you know work is being done in multiple locations. Yeah. Um, but you know the shift has always been, I think, to your point, business users. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Getting business users more productive using the tools so that they don't have to you know worry or or deal with you know multiples of other people. And so, uh, and so the force multiplication comes in where, let's say I'm a, a hundred thousand person, you know, services firm. I can compete yeah. with an Accenture. Yeah, with a force multiplier. Right, because I have, I can take my hundred, I could be 300,000 people because, you know, from a developer standpoint or from an analyst standpoint, yeah, you go down the line, you know, or I can eliminate certain roles, you know, or make them better, you know, so, you know, I guess Meta likes to talk about, you know, how they're making advertisers more effective. You know, Google, same thing. Hard. Yeah, right, so they have their segments, yeah. you know, and they give them the tool set um, and they let, let them, you know, add it, right? And so the question is for that startup, <laughs> you know, do I need a bigger call center or can AI, you know, scale? And so, you know, what's my cost to have, you know, have, you know, not a body, but just run it, you know, in the cloud or with whatever yeah. AI platform. So you agree. I mean, I think this is an opportunity for anyone to compete and as well as startups. All right, let's talk about cloud. We've got reInvent coming up. Um, what's your, uh, Andy Jassy will be there as far as LinkedIn. Post. I heard that, yeah. Uh, Matt Garman's first yeah. at reInvent. Um, does Garman become a Jassy disciple? Does he go and do the, um, Jassy format, or did he change his game? It's a lot of speculation. How many announcements will they be? Andy would open the floodgates. He just was like a machine. Yeah, yeah, Garmin yeah. works hard too. They're, he's super smart. I mean, Garmin. That's, Matt Garmin is awesome. So too. So like, they're both smart. Yeah. What does he do? Does he go the? Does he go fast? I mean, with Jassy being there, I kind of feel like um, we're gonna go back to the Jassy. You think Jassy's gonna be on stage? Because no. I remember years sure. ago. Where you know, you know, Bezos would be in the audience during Jazzy's keynote. So I, I, you know, he was front row. I, you know, I was there. You know, you know he was right there, and he was like clapping him on. Yeah, and like, you know, it was boss. it was Andy's show, right, wall to wall, right. Um, and so I think Andy should let Matt have his own show, unless he's going to be a set piece. Exactly. Unless there's a set piece with him involved. Yeah. Like an announcement. I would have him do. I think it's his I, show. I think it's Matt's show. Yeah, it has to be a Matt show. Yeah, Andy can't take that away. From yeah, him. but he could be in the front row like Bezos. Yeah, like, I'm the new Bezos. Right. Uh, he is the new Bezos. He actually. is. Yeah. Right. He runs the show. And so you know, I think that yeah. you know that's an exciting you know idea, um, but I don't see Andy going back to being Andy. Yeah. Right. That that, that I can't. Let me get your thoughts on the ecosystem. I know we both are um, have a lot of contacts over there. Kristen Niederman out there, great executive. <laughs> Ruben Forna. <laughs> Yeah, Chris, if you're watching, we think you're doing great with the partner alliances and all the stuff you're working on. But if you look at what they've done, they've Ruben Burton streamlined their global startups. They're back putting meat around that project. You got their ecosystem. And the old, the old, my old taste, the first gen cloud was, hey, you're, if you have a SaaS app and you're running yeah. on Amazon, you're in the ecosystem. Yeah. Yeah, I use compute networking and AC2, and then I use high level services. But now with Gen AI being really fast growth for them, right. Andy called it out as the fastest growing service. They're making yeah. money. Yeah. Follow the money. All right. 
what changes in the ecosystem in your opinion? Because we're seeing people play small ball with partners because this engineering small ball, smaller, smaller number of logos is better than bigger number of logos because in the old days, I look at the whole ecosystem part is the stuff floor is packed like a logo farm, like yeah, NASCAR. Yeah. Right. So now more, more has always been better. More is better. But yeah, more has always been better. Uh, uh, yeah, the Microsoft ecosystem, Google, Amazon. Okay, so let, let's talk about, let's hold that thought, put a pin in the more is better. I'm not disagreeing. But the relationship to the ecosystem. So we're calling it the connected ecosystem. Yeah. So are, is there a requirement for certain tiered partners to have better integration? That's the word. Into the platform. That's the word. What's your thought? Tier. Tier. Yeah. They're, it's always been separate. You know, in terms of, you know, um, elevation, it's not, and it's not just like how much business do you do, but you know, how many certified skills do you have? You know, how, what, you know, what, what types of assets, solutions, that's what Niedermann cares, cares about is what kind of solutions are you building on top of the platform and targeting which industries and how do we line up, right? To yeah. create value that, you know, so talk about 10 X value, right? Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, if we go back to the return on capital, they're investing all this money. They got a they got a churn, yeah. right? You know, so they they need to convert that investment into money. That they need a partner ecosystem to build yeah. out those capabilities and and engage at a level with the customer you know, or client yeah. in order to make something happen. I think I think the ecosystem opportunity for AWS and all the cloud players is huge opportunity. I think that's as on almost on par as capex. Because CapEx has got its IaaS approach right. that enables whoever wins that ecosystem battle by incenting partners to do yeah, yeah. more, yeah. I think wins. It used to be like, oh, here's some MDF money, get some incentives for training. I think whoever puts gas on that, what's your thoughts? So, or is that just I, no, no? Market? I think the, the 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 proxy for that is certification. Yeah. So there's no other way to really judge the investment that the partner is making in the platform. And so they have to train the people. Revenue. They, te they test out, right? So, so you know how many qualified people there are, how many certified, the types of certifications, all right? And so that, you know, that- so KPI certification in your yeah, mind. That's, yeah, there's no other way to judge, all right? That's and so as people have to maintain those certs over time. So it's not like one and done, you know, so there are people you know, in Amazon's ecosystem, they're gold jackets. These are people that, you know, are just so into the community. They, they, they um, collect uh, certifications, you know, you know, like, you know, uh, uh, like matchbox cars, right? It's like I mean, badges. They, yeah, it's, it's a like badges. badges. They're very proud of that. <laughs> and so that, that is the yeah. fundamental kind of design. And so even if you're a small partner, but you go all in on a, a selected partner and your people are trained to a certain level, you know, you get certain status. Yeah. Well, I'm psyched to have you on the Cube. Thanks for coming in as we start to ramp up our content here on the East Coast. I grew up in New Jersey, by the way, so I, I, I've been in California 25 years. So I'm a transplant to California, now yeah. transplanting back to New York. So this is great. So, I love having yeah. you here. Yeah. yeah. I started seeing that you were coming out here like, well, what the heck? Well, you'll be, you'll be a regular on the show when I start putting the show together <laughs> awesome. here in New York. I mean, there's a real need for tech deep dive podcast style, um, but definitely, you know, I know that your background, we've been friends for a while. So I know you got that really unique executive knowledgeable view that can go like a helicopter deep and then go high. So great perspective. Um, just final word. What are you working on now? What are you, what are you, what are you excited about now? Um, I know you're doing some PE stuff and, but what are you, what are you personally jazzed up about right now? Um, Personally, for me, you know, I uh, I was spending a lot of time in Europe, as you know, and um, developing the same or similar relationships and trying to like kind of grow that market. Um, and so I've been back and for a while now, and I've been trying to figure out, you know, where where you know what's next, you know, where, you know what's the next chapter, you know, the and and you know I've been talking to so many people to try to get a sense. Yeah. Uh, you know, what's interesting, you know, where, where's the talent, you know, where's the excitement, yeah. where's the money? We had a couple of Q posts open if you're looking for some work. 
There we go. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll, I'll do this. You know, in football, the retired coach, you know, I'll, Bill Belichick's got a great gig right now. Yeah. The Pat McAfee show. So, you know, you yeah, know, no, I'm here. Real. I'm here. <laughs> no, no, this, this this is fun. I enjoy this. All right. And I, I've always enjoyed it. It's like coaching and halftime report. Next thing you know, they got a job on the sidelines coaching again. So it's a fun yeah. commentary. Yeah. Tech athlete for sure. Yeah. Well, hey, it's hot. You just, I mean, there's so much. Like, I got to think you got to follow the money, right? Yeah. Take your own your own advice. All right. Where's the money? Where's the money going? And that yeah. and that's been elusive, right? Yeah. Because even in the AI market, you know, it's a you know kind of yeah. surge bust. Yeah. You know, particularly the last couple of years. So there's there's no I wouldn't say it's a clear clear answer. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. I think I think things are happening, and I think with the election, um, we're we're poised. Yes. All right. I think there could be you know just a, a major you know, um, thrust forward that, you know, we've kind of been stalled on. Yeah. And I, yeah, I'm very excited about that. Michael, great to see you in our studio. I'm John Furrier. We are in the East Coast studio at the New York Stock Exchange. This is our East Coast access point. I call it the Super Pop, point of presence, a super node in our network at Silicon Valley. we got Wall Street connecting it together. It's open source. And, of course, we're adding more networks to our network. And, of course, if you have any commentary, send it our way. Thanks for watching.